I wanted to give us a little good news, especially because it's the end of the week, it's a Thursday, last show of the week, and so I really wanted to share this with you. Faulkner's director of service learning, a man named Dennis Itson, has been honored as the hero of hope. So a resident of Montgomery, been here for a very long time. I don't think that he's Montgomery born, but he's certainly been a part of the community for a long period of time. And this is an award that is given, the, the Hero of Hope Award, that is given by the American Cancer Society. And I just wanted to say a little bit about this because I've known Dennis Itson for much longer than I've been here at Faulkner. He... I, He's been a part of my life since I was about maybe 11 or 12, and that was because his son, who's slightly older than me, used to come and preach at our church, and so we've known the Itsons for a really long time, and I wanted to, because I have a, a personal tie to it, and because of Montgomery, it, it's something that really helps our community, makes it look good. This isn't just like a, a citywide or a statewide thing, this is a national award. A national award for the American Cancer Society, and... He was selected for, and this is using their words, their criteria, quote, making an impact in the lives of others with his ongoing battle against cancer and for significant volunteer contribution to the American Cancer Society, which is certainly correct. And, and the point that I wanted to make with this, because you could go read the article yourself. I think AL.com put up something. Faulkner put out a, a press release about it, which was great, but the thing is, Dennis Itson is the kind of guy who has been making an impact on people's lives in a very significant way since before he even had cancer. And I've known him since before that took place, and I think that it emphasizes a point that we all would do well to remember. People do not become heroes, and remember, he's being honored as a hero of hope, that's what the name of the award is. But people do not become heroes by being faced with a great challenge and rising to the occasion. The truth is, the vast majority of human beings, when faced with a cataclysmic challenge, fall short. And even people that do have cancer, even if they wind up surviving for a very long time and, and are able to live with it, that doesn't necessarily make them heroes. How they handle it, how they react to it, if they are able to overcome and conquer that circumstance in their life, and I don't just mean by surviving, I mean by actually doing something meaningful despite the disability that they have, despite having this uh, disease of cancer, that's what makes a hero. That's what makes that difference. And you usually don't rise to an occasion. You rise to the level of the person that you already were. And so sometimes these horrible circumstances in life, be it cancer or something completely different, something that's difficult for us to deal with, Typically what happens is, it doesn't make you a better person, it gives people insight into who you already were. It brings all the stuff that was underneath up to the surface. And I think that it's fair to use that as a criteria to categorize Dennis Itson. Because I knew him before the cancer hit, I knew him before... He was well-known in the, the circles of, of people that promote Relay for Life and other charity events. I knew him before that took place and before he had a personal interest in it. And he was the same person with the same morals. I'm not saying that he's exactly the same in every way as he was, what, over a decade ago now. But what I am saying is that that foundation of moral goodness that foundation of serving the will of God and, and striving in, in everything that you do to try to do the right thing, that was already present in him way before then. And so having cancer just kind of brought that to the surface and allowed other people to see it. That's all that happened. It didn't change who he was. And the same could be said for people that find themselves in adverse circumstances all the time. And so that's why it's so important to, before some kind of cataclysm hits you and, and hits you right where you live, that you do that stuff first. Some people can find themselves in a really terrible situation and start improving, but the vast majority of people, that happens before that terrible event ever happens. Before their trial or whatever it is happens. A uh, great biblical example is Job. Job didn't become a good person because of his suffering. 
Job was already a good person and because of that was able to endure his suffering. That's the difference. And that's a biblical principle from, from throughout the Scripture, Old and New Testament. And to emphasize this idea of being somebody that impacted other people's lives, because that's something that I think I probably don't do enough of and I, I wish that I were better at. And Dennis Itson's a, a good person to look to as an example. This is a guy that has a great family, a great loving wife, and uh, somebody that I greatly admire in her, and also two incredibly intelligent, gifted, godly children. And Andrew has been preaching since I've known him. His first sermon that he ever gave was at my home congregation of Midway, and I was in attendance at that night. And, and Haley is uh, just a delight to be around. I was actually the same year as her when I came here to Faulkner uh, for my freshman and, and part of my sophomore year. And so uh, I, didn't, I wouldn't say that I got to know her really well, but you know we did spend some time together, and it was very evident in both of their lives. I knew Andrew a little bit better than I knew Haley. Um, but it was very evident in, in both of them that they had had incredibly, an incredibly fortunate circumstance to have the parents that they did, and that's a, a reflection on him as well. And, and this is a guy who's well-loved here at Faulkner and, and well-loved in the church, and personally, he made an impact on me before I ever had cancer. Because if you're looking at the story right now, and seeing somebody, oh, Caleb works at Faulkner, and this guy that also works at Faulkner is being hailed as a hero of hope, and Caleb had cancer, and, and this guy is somebody that works with cancer and, and has cancer himself, and so it kind of makes sense. Yeah, but that's the thing, like I was saying before. A lot of the impact he had on my life happened way before either of us had cancer. And we had no idea that we were both going to one day have to, to battle with that disease. And so, make those kind of impacts be the person that you want to be before some kind of big trial hits your life, and, and that's going to make you better able to withstand the onslaught of that trial. And the truth is, and I think the reason that he's being honored for this, is because Brother Dennis, his fight with cancer makes mine, frankly, look like a, a trip to Disney World. I mean, it just does. And I'm not poor-mouthing here, but I was incredibly fortunate in my cancer treatment. I only had to go through one round, and yes, it was horrible and it made me sick as a dog, but my side effects were mild compared to most cancer patients. This is a guy that has been doing this fight for a decade and has had multiple rounds of chemo. I believe he's had radiation a couple of times, has had several surgeries. Like, th this guy's been through the gauntlet. And his is persistent and keeps coming back. And, and mine went away in one round and, and thank God hasn't come back. And I'm glad that I've been blessed with only having to go through that once. But at the same time, you look at that and I almost think that it's not fair that my cancer is gone and his remains because A, he's a better person than I am. And B, he's been dealing with this for 10 years and I only had to really deal with it in earnest for about five, six months. I mean, that doesn't seem fair. If anything, he should have been, uh, you know, done and, and not having to deal with this anymore years before I even got cancer. And yet I got it when he was well into his fight with cancer, and I'm more or less done with mine, and he's not. And I'm grateful that I'm not, but at the same time, it almost makes you think, why is it that somebody else is having to deal with this, even though... I've been lucky enough to not do that, and, and I'm grateful for it, but I wonder about it. But ultimately, I, I want to leave you with this. Accolades are great. Everybody loves a slap on the back. Everybody loves it when they, they get an award, and, and that's a good thing. And I'm glad that the American Cancer Society chose well and chose somebody that, that does exactly what their award says that it's for, is making an impact in people's lives, because this is somebody that works with the collegiate Relay for Life. In fact, he kind of founded the Collegiate Relay for Life here on campus. He worked with the, the normal Relay for Life before that, and so he has had an impact on cancer patients, cancer survivors, and people that don't necessarily have a, a strong tie to cancer. He's just had an impact on people, and, and that's the kind of person that he is. But ultimately, what I want you to remember is that even though these accolades are great, and even though Dennis Itson is certainly deserving of this one, Remember, you don't need them to show the love of Christ to other people. 
I mean, it's a wonderful blessing, and I'm all for it. But ultimately, you don't need it. You don't need it to do the things that the gospel commands us to do. And that's the thing that you really have to remember. That's the thing that I want to drive home. As wonderful as it is, ultimately, you don't need a plaque or a medal to be a good person. And there, for every Dennis Sitson there is that gets a, a great prestigious award like this, and I'm proud of him as I could be, there's tons of people that go through similar things that don't get awards. And they make just as big an impact. They're just as important to other people. And that's okay, too. Because if you're doing it for the right reasons, and if you're doing it for the reasons that Jesus instructed us to, then getting an award is nice. It's always nice to be recognized. But ultimately, that's not why we're doing it in the first place. And, and the way that Dennis Hitson wound up with this award is by being the person that didn't care whether he got an accolade or not. Because he did this long before that was even in the works or, or even in the equation. And he's somebody I look up to and hope to emulate as well. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.